and we're ready to cut. Cutting is just like before. I'm going to use my fingers as a fence to put my saw up against. I'm going to start by holding my saw at a high angle. I, I, I do choke up on my saw when I use it, and I always have one finger out straight, and it's like every time I make a cut, I'm pointing where I want that saw to go. So that's what my finger does. It kind of gives me the, the direction I want to take the saw in. I start by establishing that line across the top first. See, I just dropped right in, and once that line's established, it's done. So in a sense, once you establish that line on the top, it can become a running ledge to keep your saw against. And as you watch that while you're watching your line, if you're tight, it's going to keep you on your line. If you start to wobble back and forth, you're going to start to have some deviation. So that's a thing that I try to watch, and if it starts to get off, that's where my fingers come into play. I'm going to let them just touch the saw and keep it against its newly made fence. I'll cut right down to my scribe line, not beyond. Do the same over here. Right down to, not beyond. Okay, so let's go back and cut this bit out. I'm going to take my chisel, put it right into my established line, bring it up straight, and lightly tap it. Some of you have been tapping way too hard here. That's all it is. Flip it over to the other side, put my chisel in, bring it up straight, lightly tap it. We're just simply creating a deeper scribe line. I'll come back and establish that little rim or that edge. It'll become the fence for the chisel for the next pass. By just simply paring out at an angle. You need to do this with good control too. This, is, this would not be a cut for a mallet. Although a mallet is a good, good tool and it has its place right now, I want far less pressure than the mallet's going to give me. Once my ledge is established, <coughs> excuse me, now I can go back. I've got a good edge to put my chisel up against. I didn't try to over hit. I've only going to probably take out maybe three sixteenths of an inch to a quarter of an inch. That way I'll get a much cleaner cut in between um, each face. This is one of those cuts where I, the chip has to come out the narrow side, so I'm going to take out the center part first and then go back and do the edges last. That way they won't violate those really sharp, nice, clean edges. I, I've got a, a little piece here that's just didn't break off, it's sticking up right there. That would interfere with my cut. So I'm going to go back and make sure I get it cleaned out. And I'm going to do this with total control. Now, here's something I'm going to do. When I hold my chisel, I'm going to pinch it about right there. And by pinching it there as I'm working, I can't push any further than there because my fingers are a stop. So I know that it, I, what I don't want to do is do this and come out this side because I'll end up tearing or splitting or ripping somewhere. So I've got a built-in stop. As I'm trying to pair this off, I'll work from one side. Just make sure everything's out of the way and I can't push beyond. Turn my piece over to the other side. Reestablish my little stop and that'll clean all that stuff out just fine. So now we're ready to move on. We go inside to inside. This will be a little bit more challenging to hold because we don't have flush references. So I'm going to hold a lot more pressure downward as I do this. 
I'm lining it up with my scribe lines. When I'm there, I'm going to take my knife, I'll put it right against the edge of the pen. So I'm getting a good, clean, deep knifed mark. And there it is. I need a line across the top, and if I've done my job right, and I don't know if we can see this on the camera, if we zoom in super, super, super tight, you can see where this knife mark is, and this is called a tick mark. But that tick mark also gives me a place so that I could take and put my knife in it, bring my square over to the tick mark, and now when I come and mark, those two will be exactly in a line. And I don't have any marks on the back side. And I don't need them. Uh, all I need is a line across the top and a line across the front. As my saw follows this line and that line, it has to be doing exactly the correct thing as it comes out the back side. I want to stay to the waist side of my line, and I'll stay within maybe a sixteenth of an inch or so. I don't want to be too close. my tailpiece. This time the scribe mark is to my left hand side. So I've got that knife mark on the end. I'll just stick my chisel right into it and just pair up and that little bit will just pop right off so I've at least established a straight edge on this side. And when I come back I'm going to work on keeping my chisel as flat as I can while I'm paring in. And I'm pretty close to being there. Still see a little bit of the pencil mark. Gonna do my shoulders again with my shoulders. I like to go through and do the outside edges because that's what people see. Okay, so that leaves my center. And that one looks pretty good. Let's go to the other side. Just one more quick little pair mark here. I'm 
do the long grain first. And now the long grain last this one should be toward Doug's camera. And I think we're probably pretty close. Looks good. Okay, inside to inside. Get okay, down a little bit tight. Now, as we get into doing multiple pins and tails, and as you're trying to figure out which pin and tail, because if you've got four or five or six of them going on, and you're wanting to know where the problem is in terms of the fit, the best way to do it is to just take some lead and just put a little lead right here and right here. Okay, see where I put it inside the pins? On, on that tab and on that tab? And I'm going to go back and I'm going to put the two together and the lead, because it's a nice fit. As I tap it in, I don't want to go too terribly far, but I'm getting in there pretty well. I could put it together probably the rest of the way, but let's see what's happened. So I can go back and I can read right now. That is definitely a tight section of what's going on. Not quite as tight there, but those are two places where if I just take off just a fraction, probably no more than the lead itself. I don't even know that we could measure those pieces. Do the same on the other side. This, is, this lead here is a little bit darker, so that tells me this one is a bit more of a fitting problem. Just a few thousandths of an inch. We'll go back inside to inside. It fits, it sounds better. I'm not going at it too hard or too fast. And there I've got it in all the way. And, and all the way around, everywhere, uh, it just is absolutely dead on the money. We're after a friction fit, fiber touching fiber intimately throughout the entire joint. We want, and, and it all starts with that good, thought out, laid out process. So remember, it's not so much the fact that we're cutting through dovetails and half blind dovetails, it's the fact that we're laying out lines. We're learning how to saw to those lines, not through those lines. We're learning how to chisel two lines when we need to. We know when we use a pencil. We know when we use a knife. The difference between the two in terms of the effect of the cut we're going to be getting out of it. And, and as we continue on today, now I want to start to tidy up some of these fits. If it takes you a few extra minutes, don't worry about it. You know, the, the, the fact is you're, you're developing skills at a higher quality and at a higher level than trying to race your way through something.